In this live self-defense training video, we're gonna go over simple self-defense moves using your homemade self-defense walking stick. This is a 36 inch dowel rod. It's an inch and quarter in diameter. You can get these for less than $10 at a hardware or do-it-yourself store. You sand it down, you oil it up, you have a homemade self-defense walking stick. This is made of oak, it's very strong. The first thing that I wanna show you is how to hold it. If you're using it as a walking stick, your hand would be on the top. As you're walking, you can immediately pick it up and have it in a self-defense position. So the first way that you do that is you slide your hand down the front of your homemade self-defense walking stick. That allows you to point your thumb at the threat, putting it in the other hand, and the first move is basic, simple, powerful, and effective, and it's simply thrusting through the middle of his body for self-defense. He poses a threat, he's trying to hurt you. Your hand gently slides down the front, quickly pulls it up, step in and use your whole body to strike and concentrate the force of your strike into that little tip going right through the middle of his body. Now you can go into the part here between the belly button and the privates right there in that thin muscle. You can go into the solar plexus, knock his wind out, you can go into his throat, that's permanent uh, self-defense destruction go into his face and stop him in his tracks. From here, sliding down the front, you thrust. Now you're gonna pull into the side like you're gonna chop down a tree. As you do that, notice that your hand will slide along this, uh, the length of your homemade self-defense walking stick. So from here, you can pull it back and then bring it forward in a very fast, powerful striking attack. When you finish, your hands remain separated. That allows you to keep from over-rotating and opening yourself up for an attack. So in other words, you thrust, pull it here, strike, and you keep it between you and the threat. It's a principle of self-defense using the homemade self-defense walking stick. This could actually save your life. Hello, Neil, it's good to see you. I teach something that is very similar to Krav Maga with some important differences. It's called quantum uh, self-defense or practical self-defense. Sliding here, lift, thrust, pull it in, strike, slide your hand to the end, lift the back hand up, and then bring it down over the top. Neil asked me if I taught Krav Maga. The answer is that I teach something very similar to Krav Maga. I've been around it for a long time. Slide here, point, thrust, strike, pull, lift, and chop down on, on, on top. So these are very basic moves. These are simple strikes with your homemade self-defense walking stick that you can use to defend yourself. Now, your hand can also slide down the back. And sliding down the back is one of my favorite things because I can pick it up and immediately thrust into his face for self-defense, stopping him in the tracks. From here, you can lift your elbow up like you're answering your phone, bringing it to your ear, pop that up between his legs or up under the chin or into his hand, smashing that hand. Maybe he's coming at you with a knife. You're gonna break his wrist, pop it up here, put it in the other hand, and there's that two-handed thrusting motion which will stop him and put him on the ground. Slide your hand down to the front, bring your back hand up, chopping down straight over top. So from here, your hand is now sliding down the back. There's the thrust. You can answer your phone, hitting him here, put in the other hand, two-handed thrust, slide the back hand back, pulling the staff so that your front hand goes to the end, lift your back hand over your head and bring it down with force right here, cracking him in the middle of his skull, turn off his operating system, lights out, fights over, you win for self-defense. So from here, you can also turn your thumb down as you come forward with the punch. When you turn your thumb down as you come forward with a the punch, then it's gonna come up and over, catching him off guard and striking him in a way that he can't very effectively block. So from here, bringing it up and over, into the temple, into the neck, into the arm, into the waist, into the legs, and it's just a punch with a turn. When you do that punch with a turn, the length of your staff, this whole piece of oak, will come up and strike powerfully and quickly on the side of his head. Now after you do that, get your other hand on it, and then do your other strikes, coming from one side to the other, thrusting with two hands, sweeping down into his knees. Just like that, all you do here is take your back hand and slide it a little bit and turn your whole body and strike. Using your whole body to strike gives you a lot of stopping power. 
using your homemade self-defense walking stick. So we have two ways to get into a protected position. One is slide it down the front, point the thumb, it's between you and him, step and thrust, or chop, or over the head, or coming down the side, or even taking two hands like this and pushing. Hello, Patrick, it's good to see you. Patrick's having a good day. Stepping when you do that strike, and this whole piece of oak, taking his teeth, pushing them down his throat for self-defense, breaking the nose, all of the fluid that comes out. He's got the snot coming out, the blood. He can't see, his eyes are watering, can't choke it on his stuff. For self-defense, you wanna stop him in his tracks. These are simple self-defense moves using your homemade self-defense walking stick. Sliding your hand down the back, lifting and punching here. Hello, Javier. Um, Javier Guerrero says, thanks so much for teaching. He's watching me from Mexico. Good to see you, Javier. Welcome from Mexico. Turning your hand over, bringing it into the other hand. You can also punch with the back hand. So maybe you punch here, strike here, get it into that back hand and push this forward. So it would look like this on the bag. Punch, twist, punch. Now from here, slide it down again and bring it forward on the other side of the body for self-defense. Notice that you're turning your shoulders and hips to generate maximum stopping power using the simple self-defense tool, the homemade self-defense walking stick. Again, so I put uh, below, I put a, just a basic description uh, and some links. If you need to order the supplies to be shipped to your house, get a piece of wood for less than 10 bucks. I got this one on sale. It was 50% off. And then I got some sandpaper, sand it down. Sand, one piece of sandpaper will last you forever. You get three grits. Uh, start with like the lowest grit first. I started with 80 and I pulled all the splinters off. Then I got 120, made it super smooth. Then I got 220 and made it fine smooth. And then I soaked it in oil for two days. And I'm now using butcher block oil and that makes it heavy and more flexible so that when you strike, it's not brittle and it won't break. That's the key to making the homemade self-defense walking stick. And if you search on my channel for how to make a homemade self-defense walking stick, I have several videos showing you how to make this one right here. So from here, sliding down the back, lifting it up and pushing. Uh, Cyan Stave says, want to thank you for all the martial arts videos. Absol absolutely, it's my pleasure. Thank you so much for being here. Thanks for watching. Nicholas Woodall, it's good to see you. There's one other way I want you to think about carrying your homemade self-defense walking stick. Thank you, Blossom Wilder. It's good to see you. It's just here in the middle, just carrying it like this. Maybe you don't feel comfortable walking like this. You're not a fancy person, or you're not an injured, or you don't have the injury, or you don't have the, the, the limitation. You know, for whatever reason, you don't want to carry it like that. You can just carry it like this, and there's no, nothing wrong with that. There are people in my neighborhood, older gentlemen, who wear, walk around, walk their dogs, and they carry a stick about this size for the, uh, the reason of the dogs that are coming through our neighborhood, maybe from another place, that are off of the leash. Um, wild's not the right answer. Just, you know, a lot of people, as the economy continues to put pressure on the people at the bottom, right? More and more people at the bottom are falling out. That means uh, inflation is causing a lot of people to go from uh, being housed to not being housed. Before that happens, a lot of times, or when that happens, they just open the door and they let the dogs go. And then the dogs are roaming the streets. And this has always been true. Every time there's an economic downturn, and we're in a big one now, and it's getting ready to go crazy, right? People just let their dogs go. They can't feed them. They can't take care of them. They don't know how to rehome them or do the right thing for them. So unfortunately, sadly, they just open the door and they kick them out. Now you get two or three of those dogs running around and they're out there and they're hungry and they see you and you're walking your little dog and then they become vicious. And that does happen. And we hear more and more reports of that happening as the economy comes under more and more pressure. That's why some people carry a walking stick is to protect themselves and their dog. When they go for a walk, they still wanna go for a walk, but they're afraid of that dog. Now, if that happens, there's some very basic things that you can do especially for the more vicious type of dogs that latch on and then they won't let go and they start to shake. If you can put something in their mouth instead of your arm or your leg or your dog, namely the stick, shove that stick in the mouth and let them even play like tag and pull with it, right? That's if there's one. If there's more than one, you can simply strike and aiming for the nose and for some, some dogs, 
hitting them in the, in the hindquarters is effective. But sticking it, having something other than your flesh to keep between you and that vicious dog or dogs is, is it could be life-saving for a lot of people. So that's why people now are also considering carrying these or are carrying these because when they're walking their dogs, and I've, I has happened to someone in my family where they lost a dog to a pit bull running from a house, and, it, and it, so it does happen, and it's, it's happening more and more and more, right? And then you're trying to fight him off, and then you get bit, and he rips you up, and sometimes it's even worse than that. So having an option, you know, and some people have this option, but that's not even the, the best option because most people won't carry that or can't carry that, but everybody can carry one of these. Uh, David says, do they change for the person using a cane rather than a stick? If you have a cane and it has the crook on the end, there's a lot more cool stuff that you can do. Now, I probably have about 400 videos on how to defend yourself with a walking cane with the crook. So you'll have to look those up, and I'll give you specific techniques in there, and we'll do more training this week. The walking stick is just a little bit different just because you don't have that crook. The crook gives you uh, some reach out, you know, some smash and grab options that you don't have with just the stick. So yeah, there are different things that you would do with a walking cane than with just a walking stick. But a lot of people don't want to carry the cane and they would choose or be comfortable with carrying this. If you're carrying it like this, there are two ways to get it into a protected, protected position, to get into your guard, so to speak. The first way is by turning your hand down so that you're in this push-up position. From this position, you have a simple thrust with two hands, it's very effective. From this position, you can box the sides, maybe someone's ears, someone's ribs, maybe if it's an animal, something lower like that, having two hands striking instead of one, pulling and thrusting with two hands, either this way or this way, they both work. You slide one hand down and pushing down. This may not seem uh, intuitive or natural, but it's a very powerful position. Striking down this way or striking through this way, taking out a knee or taking out a vicious dog who won't let go of your dog or is trying to bite you, striking here to the nose. You can push with two hands there. You can slide the hands down and strike that way. That's by turning from here to here. You could also turn your palm up and now it looks like a sword, right? Not a baseball bat. A baseball bat, when you swing a bat, uh, the, you know, the, the sport of baseball is designed so that when you are hitting that ball, your wrists rotate through. Same thing with a golf club. You want that rotation. You don't want that rotation with a self-defense strike. On a self-defense strike, you want to be able to strike and stop in the middle of your body. You can still follow through, but then you want to get it back into this position as quickly as possible. If you put your hands together for a self-defense strike and you rotate through, and then he closes that distance, stabs you, or you get bit, that's ineffective. So I want you to learn how to have your hand like this, and strike and be able to stop the strike because there is no rotation because you have your hands separated here. So there's always a separation at the end of the strike. Whether it's coming down or coming from the shoulder, you can have it from one hand to the other hand, but all those are simple, effective self-defense strikes. You have basic thrusts, you have chopping motions, you have pushing motions, and then you have these sliding motions, sliding down. If you want to practice those sliding, put your hand one on the, uh, each end, turn one up, turn one down, slide them together, turn, slide them out, just practice this. You see I lost it there for a second, which is good. You want to practice this here and then going the other way so that when you start to strike, your hands will know where to go and how to strike because they'll slide along the staff. And as they're sliding, they're also pushing. That accelerates the strike. By sliding, you're adding speed and power. And you're always pulling with the back hand. That's why it's a, an arcing slicing motion, arcing motion, and not a pushing down motion. An arcing motion, you're not gonna break your stick. If you just come down like this and you're pushing, then you're gonna break it when you hit something super hard. But if you pull, learn how to pull it, and chop this way, chop this way, coming from here, then it won't break. The other thing that I want you to practice is hand walking. So you're hand walking, you're walking your hand from one side. And the reason for this is you might be in this position and you hit them here, but then you want to change and hit them with your hands in the other position. Hello, Doug, it's good to see you. So you're changing your hand from here to here. I like to start 
just like this when I'm teaching you in person. I'll have you do this for a while, and then I'll have you start to turn it into an angle, and then I'll have you start to turn it into a striking motion, coming off the shoulders, and then coming down over the top, and then going into the knees, and just striking from one side to the other side over and over and over. Hello, CSB, Ben Garrett, it's good to see you. That's all I've got for today. I'm gonna to do another one, uh, probably tomorrow we have time, and um, I'm looking for a new weapon. I'm going to bring in something new for tomorrow. I'll see you guys then. Thank you.